So I always show. You monitor any questions and anything? Tom's here. What's that? Uh, you monitor any questions and stuff, right? Um, I can't on Zoom. I can't on Facebook. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Just on Zoom. I can see him on Facebook. Yeah. yeah. What's up, Tom? How's it going today, guys? Good, good. Awesome. Yeah, worried about you, man. I haven't seen you in a couple of days. Yeah, I'm sorry. I had a couple of conflicts. Uh, no worries. I got you. Cool. You missed the big announcement at team meeting yesterday. Oh, yeah. I talked to Katrina, and she told me that, and I'm okay. really worried about that. It's very, very kind. I don't know what in the world I could how it could happen, but thank you. <laughs> Well, congratulations, Tom. Yeah. Appreciate so we'll you. get started. I got some people jumping on Facebook. So we'll get started in just a minute here, guys. Just bear with us. Get some more people jumping in here. Um, so everybody knows we're talking about the book Profit First today. Um, we're going to be jumping into Chapter 2. Um, chapter 2 is the core principles of Profit First. And we're going to go over the four core principles today. Um, so let's just get rolling. I want to respect everybody's time. We'll jump right in and get going. Um, hey, Donald, how are you? Good to see you, man. Uh, thanks for saying hello. So let's talk about the four core principles um, in the book Profit First. And so, um, you know, as, as, a, as this writer continues to talk to us, you know, he, he sends a lot of personal stories and everything and what leads up to the understanding of the four core principles. Hey, Terry. Um, so let's talk about the four core principles. Um, so number one, well, actually, before we jump into that, let's figure out the, the mindset process behind the four core principles, okay? And so there's, um, he relates it to eating, okay? And so the four core principles of eating and being healthy in, is the same when it comes to profit in your business. So the first core principle when it comes to eating is he says, use smaller plates, okay? If you use smaller plates, you'll take in less amount meaning you'll take in less calories. Um, so as a result, you will not overeat because what we put on our plate, we typically will consume everything that's on there. So that, that's kind of the first, that, that's the first thing is use smaller plates. Second thing he talks about is serve sequentially, okay? So if we're talking about a, a diet or eating, right? He says, eat the vegetables first. Eat the things that are high in nutrients, high in vitamins. Eat those things first because then they will start to nourish and satisfy the body first. Then you move on to the mac and cheese or the mashed potatoes, which don't have as much nutrients and vitamins that your body needs. As a result, what you'll most likely do is if you're going to have anything left over at the end of your meal, it's going to be the, the things that don't add as much value to your body. So smaller amounts and eating sequentially. Then you want to remove the temptation, right? So if, we are eating smaller amounts and we're used to eating a larger amount, then we may still be hungry at the end of it. So remove the Doritos, right? Remove the candy, um, remove the, the, the chocolate cake or whatever it is, right? Remove those things, um, take, take the temptation out, okay? And then lastly, the fourth thing is enforce, um, enforcing a rhyme, right? Enforcing a rhythm to how you're gonna go ahead and do your um, do, do your eating habits. And so one of the things and I'm sure you guys have heard this before is that it's a lot healthier if you eat five small meals a day instead of having two or three big meals. A lot of us just get up in the morning and you know we're out the door, we skip breakfast, we grab coffee, we're good with that. We'll eat lunch and we'll probably overeat for lunch because we've got a long day or something like that. And then we're going to go home, we're going to have our big dinner. That's like our, our big meal. If you look at a lot of Latin cultures, the, the lunch is really their big meal, right? That's, that's where they have, and they have a smaller meal for dinner, which is usually a lot later, okay? So what he's saying here is, you know, um, get that rhythm down, right? And, and do five small meals a day. Now, you guys may say, okay, great, PJ, thanks. What the heck does any of this have to do with profit in your business? And so let's, let's just take a look at that first one, right? that they, they said using smaller plates. And he talks about Parkinson's law in here. And one of the things he says about Parkinson's law is the demand for something expands to match its supply. In economics, this is what's commonly referred to um, as induced demand. Yet, I'm gonna say that one more time and just listen to it. The demand for something expands to match the supply, 
okay? So where have we heard this before, guys? Well, go to bold, right? And what does bold tell us? Bold tells us that all work expands to fill the time that's allotted, right? That's a bold law. So, and this is something that I'm just gonna kind of go off and tell a quick little personal story. Um, a lot of you guys know Chip Walton. Um, he's, he's been my mentor since I got into this business and I was, I was working a lot. I wanted to really kind of, you know, come out the gate screaming as a real estate agent, make a lot of money. And so what I, what I did is I, I would get to the office very early in the morning. I'd get to the office between 6.30 and 7 in the morning. And then being a single dad and not seeing my son every single day, the days I didn't have my son, I would stay in the office till sometimes 8, 8.30 at night and get my work done, okay? And so I was putting in a lot of time and so what Chip recognized, which I couldn't recognize, is I had time to do stuff. I had time to say, okay, I could put that to the back burner. I wasn't, you guys have read the book, Eat That Frog. I wasn't eating the frog first thing in the morning. And so Chip did a really cool exercise with me. And he told me, he said, okay, you pick up your son every Friday. What time do you pick up your son? And I said, well, typically, you know, he's home from preschool around two o'clock in the afternoon, whatever it was. So anytime after that, um, between then and five is when I pick him up. He goes, great. He goes, this is what I want you to do. He said, from now on, you're only allowed to work till noon on Fridays. And I was like, okay. He said, and then what you're going to do is you're going to leave at 12 noon. You're going to go grab lunch and you're going to go sit in a park or do something on your own just to get your mental head right and do that from noon to one o'clock for yourself or, or as much, much time as allotted. And then you be there right at two o'clock to pick your son up. And I said, okay. And so now I, he was going to his great grandmother's house so I could pick him up later. I didn't have to be there right at two o'clock. Yet Chip got me into my rhythm, right? He got me on a schedule with this. Yet if you go back to using the smaller plates or the time that was allotted, what I had in my business is instead of having a six hour, eight hour work day, now I had a four hour work day. What did I find myself doing? Every Friday I was getting in there like right at 6.30. I was getting in there early and I was showing up. One of the really cool things about getting in um, at 6.30 in the morning is that nobody's in the office. So I was able to go in and bang out all my emails and everything if I had any red flags or emergencies and I could respond to those emails and then I could actually go and start my day before a lot of the people were up. So it was, it was really, uh, it, was, it was kind of an aha moment for me as to what I was doing. Then I, I learned that, so if I only got this amount of time, I, Tom, I didn't have time for the water cooler talk with you, right? You know, you bet I, I couldn't, couldn't hang out with you and, and gab about, you know, the Red Sox game last night or whatever it is, right? I had to be um, on purpose when I was in the office and people knew that. And I was just like, and literally, I, I put my headphones in when I wasn't even listening to music or wasn't on a phone call because it, it prevented people from talking to me. And so as I started to get really, and I was, I was sitting in a cubicle at the time. And so as it started going, 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 I was like, okay, now I need to get to an office, right? And so what Chip taught me with that lesson, and I've actually done this with an agent on my team now, is it really made me more purposeful with my time. So when we're talking about Parkinson's law and that, you know, all work fills to the time that's allotted, if I told you that you guys had to go ahead and do this, uh, Christina Mani, I see you jumping on right now. Christina, you need to go ahead and get your pre-approval letters done for these three people. And by the way, you've got three hours to do it. So one person per hour. Yet if I told you you had nine hours to do it, you had three hours per person, would you, would you get more things done, right? Now, I know Christina, I know she's a rock star and um, she's a great mortgage lender. And she's gonna go ahead and bang that stuff out because she understands that there's more business for her if she gets that done. Yet, when we look at it, really what time is allotted for us, sometimes it will, will allow whatever task we're doing to take up that whole time. So being mindful and being purposeful around what you're doing. So that's, that's what's called Parkinson's law. And that's the first core principle when it comes to profit first. So the second principle, and if you guys do have the book profit first, you guys are following along with me. Um, I'm over on page 41 right now. Um, why the first part of profit matters. And so um, what he says in here is the principle is we place additional significance on what we encounter first. 
So I want to do a quick exercise with everybody, okay? So if you guys got a scrap piece of paper and a pen, get that out right now. And um, if you don't, um, that's fine. Uh, I'll just, I just want you to think about the words that I'm going to tell you, okay? And, and I want to get, and get ready to get unmuted because I want to get a little bit of feedback here. Um, or go ahead and comment if you're on Facebook. So I'm going to say five words to you, and I want to know the initial thought that comes into your head or the initial emotion and reaction you have to it. So these are the words, evil, hate, anger, joy, care, love. I'm sorry, that's six words, not five words. I can count. I'm going to do that one more time. I want you guys to think about what emotion you guys are feeling. I want to get some feedback from you, okay? Or just put it in the comment section. So again, evil, hate, anger, joy, care, and love. Okay, so guys, give me some feedback. What, are you, what emotions are, are you feeling right now? What's going on in your mind? What are you thinking of? Are we in a good mood? Are we in a bad mood? Are we in a negative place? Are we in a positive place? Give me some feedback here. What do you got, Chels? I know you want to say something. Well, um, just like discomfort. A lot of things relating to discomfort. Okay, so, so those of you guys on Facebook, Chelsea said discomfort, right? So by hearing those words, she felt discomfort, okay? All right, now can we do the exercise again yet a little bit differently? Is that okay, guys? All right, so now I'm gonna read you six words again, and I wanna know what your thought process is or what you're feeling after this, okay? Love. Care. Joy. Anger. Hate. Evil. Do those one more time, okay? And just think about the emotions that you're hearing, starting right now with love, care, joy, anger, hate, evil. All right, so Chelsea, you told us the first series of words made you feel uncomfortable or discomfort, right? What do those words make you feel? It's like more natural, like that's like my natural thought process maybe, like those are the processes I would go through. Okay, so as you guys on Facebook, Chelsea told us it's, it's more natural, it's more comfortable, shall I say, right? Is that fair enough yeah. to say? Yeah. All right, so I want you guys to look at the series of words and if you guys wrote them down at home, you've got evil, hate, anger, joy, care, love. That's the discomfort, uncomfortable. And then we've got love, care, joy, anger, hate, evil. What you guys have probably noticed, it's the same six words, just in a different order. And so when we started with evil, it took Chelsea to a very negative place in her mind or a very uncomfortable place in her mind because we start with what we see first. Then when we started with love and ended with evil, she said that's her natural thought process that was more comfortable for her, right? And so go back to the principle. We place additional significance on what we encounter first. So what in your business right now is, are you encountering first? Because usually whatever you start the day with is what is going to be the main primary focus. And it's just, it's human nature that over time we're going to get tired as the day goes on. So as we get to these certain tasks and these certain items, we're going to have less energy. And so when we move on through our day, as a result, when we get there, we're not, it's not as significant or as important as the thing that came first. So go back, I mentioned that book, Eat, Eat That Frog, right? Why do we say take care of the most difficult or most challenging tasks that you have first thing in the morning or do that first? Because then the rest of the day is a breeze and you're gonna have less energy. If you don't eat that frog first thing in the morning, you don't take on that challenge at, at the beginning of the day and say, I'm gonna put this off till later and I'm gonna put this off till later and I'm gonna put this, and guess what happens? Either you do a piss poor job of doing it, or it just never actually gets done, right? Oh, I'll, I'll do that tomorrow, and then I'll do that tomorrow, and then I'll do it next week, 
and then it just it just never gets done, right? It's like it's like that project that you start that never gets finished. So when we're talking about the, the four core principles around why uh, or around profit and how to be more profitable, remember that we have an additional significance on what's showing up first. Okay, so number three. Now remember, we're talking about the, the diet and eating healthy. Three is removing temptation. So once you take your profit, you need to put it away. And what I mean by that, go and start a bank account. Go and start a checking account that is just going to be where you put your profit. And guys, preferably one that you don't look at. Just put your profit in there and don't even worry about it, okay? Because this is what ends up happening is we have a bad month, right? And in real estate, when we have a bad month, we don't make as much money. Yet we still have a lifestyle and a livelihood that we want to upkeep. So what do we do? We dip into our profit. We dip into our savings. So I can still go to my weekly dinner at Ruth Chris or whatever it is, right? I know you guys hear me say Ruth Chris all the time. I actually don't really go there that often. But anyways, my point is, if we just left the profit sitting in this account over here and we didn't touch it, and then we adjusted our spending according to what was going on in our businesses, then as a result, we would, we would maybe not go out to as many dinners or whatever, yet we would ensure that we have that profit intact, okay? So remove the temptation. Take your profit, don't put it into your checking account or your savings account. Go open up a separate account that you don't touch, okay? All right, and then we talked about enforcing a rhythm, right? And so how do we enforce a rhythm into our business, right? So they said, you know, um, with the meals, you break it down to five meals a day instead of doing three meals or two big meals. Uh, you also, what you need to do is you need to eat those meals at the same time. So what do we need to do in our business, right? What we need to do in our business is we need to make sure that we're doing everything at the same time, right? So I'm going to lead generate today. Okay, you know what? Uh, had a couple of too many beers last night. I'm going to go to the office late. It's okay. I'll lead generate from, from 10 till noon. And then I'll do an extra hour in the afternoon or whatever. It gets you out of rhythm, gets you lazy, and you don't end up doing it, right? So we need to have this rhythm in our business where, hey, you know, as Mark Brenneman, our regional director says, you know, show up, dress up, you know, and, and just for the day. Don't be that person sitting there, oh, I'm just doing Zoom right now, so I don't need to take a shower. I don't need to brush my teeth, right? You guys were on a team meeting yesterday, saw Mark Ramsey talking about somebody who said, oh, it's 2 o'clock, I haven't brushed my teeth yet. That's disgusting, okay? Like, seriously, get up and live your life as if you were still going to the office, if you were still doing your normal business, your normal days, okay? Now, make sure that you've got that rhythm in your business moving forward, right? And that's how you're going to have predictability in your business. If you guys can focus on how to be predictable in your business, then you're going to know what's coming down the road. If you don't have predictability in your business, it's just a crapshoot, right? How, how do I plan for anything? You know what? I tighten my belt around the, the beginning of the month when, you know, I know I have to pay my mortgage and I got my utilities and all that stuff. And, you know, as the end of the month's approaching, I've got some extra money. I'm going out and spending and partying and whatever. This is why you need to have that profit account set aside. Okay. So those are, those are the four core principles. Um, and, and I want to give you, um, as we talked about yesterday about accountants doing things the wrong way. Right. And so, I want to give you a new accounting method for your business. Is that okay? Can we do that? Okay. So a lot of times what we'll do is we'll say, okay, I made X amount of dollars, my gross commission income. Okay. So that's my hundred percent. My cost of sales is 30% of that or should be. My expenses are 30% of that. My profit left over should be 40%. Okay. So what we do in our mind is we make up this, this math figure or we, this, math formula that says, okay, whatever my expenses plus my cost of sales plus my profit is going to equal what I need to do in sales or what I needed to get for a gross commission income, right? What if we did it the other way around? What if we took the number and we just did the math backwards? What if we said, let me take my sales or my gross commission income and I'm going to take out my profit? What's that going to leave me with? 
that's going to leave me with my expenses and my gross commission income number. I'm sorry, my expenses and my cost of sale. So if we go in and we know the 30, 30, 40 rule, we go in and say, okay, this is what I've made. I'm going to take my profit out first. And then that's going to allow me to go and, and pay my expenses after the fact. Well, number one, would you be able to pay your expenses? Or number two, would you realize that, well, maybe I don't need that expense, right? What can I cut my business? See, you guys know the bold law, change the way you look at things and the things you look at change. So if we stop saying, this is how much money I have and I need to take out my cost of sales, I need to take out my expenses and what's left is my profit. Instead, this is how much money I made, gross commission income, I'm taking my profit out and then I have to figure out how to pay the bills, right? Or the expenses and the cost of sales. So when you flip your mindset around it, it, it gives you a different perspective. And so I hope that's helpful for you guys. It was, I know it was really helpful for me and my business because I would just say, eh, it's okay. My profit's not at 40%. It's only at 33%. That's okay because I like being a nice guy and taking care of people and this, that. And no, I'm not running a successful business at that point. I, I got a little vulnerable on here. Yesterday, I told you guys, you know, one year I was making a lot of money. I was selling a lot of stuff. When it came down to it, my profit was $23,000 at the end of the year. Like I was like poverty level, right? Yet nobody would know it because I'm selling $15 million in sales and this, that, and the other thing. So you guys have to really, really dive into these numbers on your P&L and, and to understand it the right way. You know, I love, I love the analogy that he's using in chapter two about eating healthy. Um, had a conversation yesterday um, with uh, another friend who's um, in the Valentine Market Center, Lorenzo Boone. Um, he's, uh, he's a leader in his own right, former ALC member, um, the guy's CES instructor. He teaches um, Quantum Leap for kids. He's one of those instructors. There's not many of those around. I think he's the only one in our area, actually. And we were having a conversation yesterday, and he, he said to me, he said, profit and health go right in line. And I was like, you know, yeah, I completely understand that. And, and keeping healthy body, healthy mind is going to allow you to be profitable with your, your, your life or your health, which will then, if you start acting that way, you're going to, what we say at Keller Williams, how you show up here, it's how you show up everywhere. So if you're acting that way in your own personal well-being, that's when your profit's really going to increase and soar. And I was like, you know, Lorenzo, thanks. That's kind of interesting. And, you know, and I, and I took a little bit of time to ponder that. And then, of course, I'd already read this book before, but sitting down last night, rereading that, and the first thing the guy talks about is the health of eating in relationship to profit. And I guess it was getting hit with it twice by two different people, you know, and um, <laughs> Lorenz, I see you on there. Being healthy is being profitable. You're 100% right, you know. And so hearing it again, it kind of resonated a little bit better with me. So Lorenz, thank you for that. And, you know, for, for understanding how we need to be more profitable, um, it, start, it starts with health, um, you know. So what I want you guys to do is I want you guys to make a focus around these four core principles um, of, of profitability. And so before we end for the day here, we're going to talk about how to take action, okay? And so the easy um, first steps in doing this. Number one, trust the process, okay? Um, as I say, you know, uh, swallow the red pill, jump into the matrix, trust the process. Okay. You have to trust it. Um, it works yet. It's unfamiliar. And so guys, this is where growth happens. Right. And so as we talk about, um, the, um, comfort zone that we live in, right. We know we move from the comfort zone to the fear zone, which brings us into the learning zone. And then that's where we have growth in our life. And so the first step is you got to trust this process that this process is going to work. Okay. Um, Second, open a new account. Like I said, put a uh, checking account, something that you're not going to touch and just put your profit in there. Put your profit in there. It's going to be difficult or I'm not, no, let's not use the word difficult. Let's not bring a negative into it. It may be different or uncomfortable at first, yet when we start getting into that rhythm is where we're going to go ahead and, and now we can, okay, I can do this in my business or now I'm going to be more aware of where my expenses are. I'm going to be more aware of, of how much my cost of sales is and then say, huh, do I need to make a change in my business? Okay, well, I really need to go ahead and actually sell an extra one this month just so I can make sure that I stay inside of where 
my profitability is because some expenses fluctuate with sales, some are constant. Rent for this office I'm in right now, this office rent is $1,094 a month. Whether I like it or not, indifferent, I have to pay that every single month. That's a fixed expense that I have in my business. If we're not selling homes, I can't afford to stay in this office. Maybe I have to get out of the office or whatever. So I have to make sure instead of what most agents are going to tell you and say, ah, you know what, guys, I'll make it up next month and I'll make it up next month and I'll put it off and put it off. Um, Matt Gerd just said, uh, great principles. He's used this in his trucking business. Okay. Um, those guys do not know Matt. We grew up together. Um, a buddy from uh, from childhood. So again, this this no, we're not just talking real estate here. We're talking profit first in any business. Um, so open that new account, and then number three, transfer one percent of your current money, however much money you got in the bank right now, one percent of it. Take it and go ahead and put it in that account and get it rolling, and leave it. Don't touch it. Don't put it as a loan. Don't pay yourself back for it. Just put it in there. One percent of the money that you have right now. And I was having a conversation with an agent earlier today and we were breaking down the P&L of their business. And we were going and saying, okay, where's the cost of sales? Where's the expense? What's the profit margin? How much, how much money are they making or not making? What is their take home before taxes? And excuse me, the agent was a little bit vulnerable with me and said, you know, I, I failed. These numbers are not impressive. And I said, okay, we will take a step back and let's change our thought process, right? Change your mindset around that. Just because we don't like the numbers right now, that's fine. That's a baseline. That's where we start, okay? So I don't care what the numbers are. I don't care how many sales you guys have done. I don't care what business we're talking about. You guys are not having a successful month, quarter, year. Great, awesome. Because you know what? When we apply these principles the right way and follow it to a T, then what ends up showing up next year at the same time, look at our improvement, right? Look at what we were able to do. Look at how we were able to be consistent in our business, become predictable in our business, okay? Right now, with everything that's going on with COVID and coronavirus, a lot of stuff is thrown out of whack. And listen, guys, you're going to see the business owners that are not clued into their P&L right now are going to start showing up as throwing their hands up in the air and saying, well, I don't know what to do. Coronavirus is unpredictable. I don't know what's going to happen. I don't know. The, the state just uh, changed our safety in place lockdown until May 8th. It was supposed to be over at the end of the month, about April 30th, so tomorrow. But now I've got to wait till May 8th, blah, blah, blah. Listen, it doesn't matter what's happening around you, okay? Yeah, you've got some extreme things and you've got some new rules that are put down on you. Yet if you're a true business person, you're going to figure out how to get around that legally, okay, or you're going to figure out how you have to work in a new norm, okay, and that's, that's the true vision of a leader, okay, listen guys, I don't want to, I, I don't want to irritate or piss anybody off, yet it's been really easy, the economy has been really strong for the last seven years or so, and you know, it's funny because we see these shifts in our market in about a three year, or in about a seven year to 11 year window, uh, Rob Talbot told us that last week when he was on this uh, pivot with me. And he said, you know, there's a seven-year shift. It's been really easy to go and start a business. And I'm not just talking about real estate. I'm talking about any business that's out there. And so where are you right now in your business? And are we really zeroing in on those numbers? Because you're going to see a lot of people that aren't having these conversations right now, and they're going to be throwing their hands up in the air, and the business is just going to fall apart. You know? And I've had lots of conversations over the last six weeks with real estate agents that are saying, you know, I, I don't know, I'm just going to wait. I'm just going to have to do this. I'm just going to have to figure it out. Okay? I, I talked with a $100 million producer on Monday. And we talked about both of our businesses and, and the impacts and things that we were seeing. And as a result, the changes that he was making in his business, the changes I was making in my business. Um, I talked to another agent a couple of weeks ago. And unfortunately for her, in her business, she had to let um, an administrative person go. And that's because, and, and it's not that she's running her business right, wrong, or indifferent. She, she follows the models. She has a good profit percentage. 
And she also knew that this person had recently been added to boost and take their business to the next level. And right now, that was not what was going to happen. So unfortunately, that, that's what had to happen so her business can survive. And so a lot of times when we're looking at this, we're just kind of, hey, in, in good times in business, good times in the economy, anybody, any Joe Schmo can go ahead and open up a business. It doesn't necessarily mean that it's going to be successful or it's being done the right way. Yet, if you're following the principles in the business, as, as this book shows you, and, and you're following those things to a T, you're going to see it's, it's going to build slowly, 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 slowly. You're going to get to a point where it's just kind of running on its own and kind of explodes up, right, and really opens up. Um, Louise McGuire says people have to adapt to the new norm. Louise, you're 100% right, you know, and, and Louise, that's not just for the real estate business, right? This is for any business. And Judy just said really good, really good for retirement too, okay? Uh, Judy uh, grew up with me back home as well, or she's my parents' age. So um, it's kind of funny when we see different people at different uh, places where they are in their life. Yet getting back to the point of this and the reason why we're focusing on this book this week is because right now, everybody needs a profit injection into their business. I don't care who you are, where you are, what, what you do. Matt runs a trucking business, but most of us on here are in real estate. I see some loan officers on here. Um, my buddy Mike, who runs hospitals, is on here. Okay? Everybody has to get focused around the profit that they need to be putting into their business. So let's change it. Let's look at it differently. Let's look at how much money we have coming in and let's take our profit out first and then figure out how to pay the bills. Does it make it sense, guys? It's a different way to look at the profit or the profitability that you can have in your business, yet it's also a really, really good fundamental way for a business. And I'll tell you right now, as we come out of this um, COVID and we, we shift into this new normal that we're going to be experiencing, whatever that looks like, you better, better make sure that you're on point with your numbers. Because if we're not on point with our numbers, the businesses aren't even going to get off the ground. So if you guys got any questions, please unmute yourself if you're on Zoom and ask away. If you guys are over on Facebook, please go ahead and uh, type any questions or comments in down at the bottom. Um, it's 2.31, it's so we're wrapping up right now. Um, we are going to continue with Profit First tomorrow. Okay, guys, we're going to be jumping into Chapter 3. All right. So just be mindful, be ready, be prepared for that. Um, and uh, we'll go from there. Any questions? Any comments? Cool. All right. Again, guys, you can always go back to these um, on my Facebook page and watch the ones from yesterday um, or uh, the previous ones. Um, we had a little bit of a issue with the uh, Zoom going to Facebook. So I'm just doing them all on my Facebook page right now. Um, uh, Matt says we're headed, are we headed into a buyer's market um, or a seller's market? Um, is the next quarter a good time to invest in real estate? Um, so Matt, right now, what we're looking at and what we're seeing is we've been in a very heavy seller's market. Now, Matt, I know you're not North Carolina, so it's going to be different. Um, go back to what we were seeing happen in December. And so if you're talking on a national level, the, the natural shift from a seller's to a buyer's market had already started on the West Coast. So we had seen, um, for example, um, Oregon, uh, Washington State, and California had already started to see where their market was shifting in the other direction and they were having to bring prices of homes down. Okay, so Matt says he's in Georgia. Okay, um, I didn't know you'd move to Georgia, buddy. Um, again, I'm not 100% familiar with the Georgia market. I'm, I'm, a, I'm a state away. Um, you know, what we're seeing right now in our market here is that we've had about one to two months worth of inventory. And so, um, and Matt, you, you can private message me after this and I can hook you up with an agent in Georgia that can give you better details around the numbers that are there. Yet when we're looking at um, fair market value, if you want to call it, that's about a six month inventory. Um, and I know a lot of you guys know that because we talk about that a lot on here. So being at a one to two, we're still going to stay at least where we are here in a seller's market for the time being. Um, Matt, Georgia's probably blowing up a little bit right now because they've already removed their stay in place. 
and people are going out and doing things. Um, restaurants are even open there now. So um, Georgia is probably going to see a little bit of, a, of uh, something we're going to model after what we do here in the Carolinas. Um, we have seen some counties, you guys know Mecklenburg County that we're in, um, has just removed um, all of the restrictions or pretty much all the restrictions for real estate agents. So basically tomorrow, it goes into effect tomorrow, okay? Uh, we can go back to showing ho homes that, um, whether they're vacant or not, we can go back to showing those properties. Um, so Matt, what I tell you is, um, pretty much the majority of the country has been in a very good seller's market um, for the last couple of years. We're going to see a transition out of the seller's market. Um, I do not think it's going to jump straight to a buyer's market. Um, it usually does not happen that quickly. So just to be mindful, you are going to feel some sort of a shift and a change. Is it going to be the best time to invest? Um, probably, uh, it depends. There's, there's never a bad time to invest in real estate because real estate, with the exception of a couple little recession bumps, is constantly growing. Um, is it going to be a better time to invest a year from now? Maybe. Um, again, I don't want to predict the market, um, yet that's what I see happening for us. We need to have some sort of a market correction. Interest rates are at an all-time low. Um, prices have been up for the most part across the country. And as a result, if we're going to transition, we, we got to have like, you know, you got to have those ups and downs or what we call the real estate roller coaster. Um, I would see that we're going to turn back towards a buyer's market, maybe not fully into a buyer's market, yet it's going to become a little bit, um, I think a little bit more challenging on the selling side of things. So, uh, but thank you. Great question. Um, what else? Am I seeing any other questions here? And Matt, we can chat afterwards again, but so thanks. Um, all right. So guys, um, thank you for being here. Um, if you guys have any other questions, go get the book Profit First. Um, it's really good. And as we were talking yesterday, I know we didn't touch too much upon it today. But you got it, Matt. Um, we weren't talking too much about it today. Um, yet this is, this is kind of how you design your personal, right? Like how you're going to do your personal spending as well here. So just be mindful of that. This is not just a real estate Zoom or Facebook Live. This is not just a business. This is what we need to do in our own personal lives and look at our personal expenses and our personal cost of sales so that we have our personal profit or our savings, right? So that we can be able to do nice things um, with our friends and family. So guys, love you all for being here. I know I'm over today. So thank you. Um, you guys need anything, buzz me. Otherwise, thanks. Have a great day. I'll see you guys tomorrow at two o'clock.